good afternoon everyone back welcome back to the channel here we got some updating to do it's been uh, another couple weeks since we posted a video for you guys so where are we at in the sheep barn here we're we've done a lot of shipping this past week um, this is the week before one of the Muslim holidays so a lot of our ram lambs went this week well I should say only about uh, I think 50 or 60 of our ram lambs uh, went this week and we've also been shipping a lot of our breeding stock um, we've got a group of 50 here of replacement females they should be going out this coming Saturday this group here they're offspring of Albert our new ram and I'm going to be keeping the majority of these for our own replacements and then we got 15 here which were from the other group from my other rams and these are 15 I've selected that we'll also be keeping for ourselves so in total we've got about 65 here and a few leftover ram lambs there's two in here which have been selected for breeding stock purposes we just haven't found a buyer for them yet and on this side we've got uh, I don't know about 60 females here 20 of which have been spoken for and the rest have not been spoken for yet some of them tentatively I guess I'm not worried about finding a home for them um, and then these ones here are the remainders um, the 50 that I'm keeping for myself from Albert so these are the ram lambs from that group and uh, that guy there he's got a blue mark on him because he's been selected for breeding stock and then we've just got the one group left here that are May second half of May lambing so we got what two more weeks before we wean these guys Kurt just feed, finished feeding them some grain and just currently mixing feed over there this is our creep area for these guys and here's our four rams we gotta move these gates out of here but Then we've got 50 of our ewes out there and about 180 out on pasture in another area. That's kind of where we're sitting in terms of in the barn. It's nice to uh, see some of these lambs finally going out. We've been hanging on to these lambs since probably February, March. Um, so it's good to see them finally on their way out the door. We've been feeding them this whole time and with feed prices uh, the way they have been, it's nice to uh, unload some of these lambs and uh, move them on to uh, respective buyers and uh, we can stop feeding so it's nice to see some income coming in from uh, all these weeks of taking care of all these lambs that's the thing about farming um, as opposed to some other businesses I know a lot of other businesses have this too but farming is a real process it's not something where you you put your time and effort in and a few weeks later you see a return on it it's usually long-term investment where you end up either buying stock and then breeding them having that five month gestation and you've got your lambing and uh, they're 60 days at least until they're weaned and then you've got your period of finishing off those lambs so it can be I would say eight months is not yeah I would say almost from nine months to a year you're not seeing a return on that investment so it's a pretty long turnaround time and uh, it's not so bad once you've got the ball rolling and you've got different sheep at different stages so you kind of start to spread out that cash flow a little bit but there's definitely that period of time where when you're first getting started especially for those people who are buying breeding stock for the first time getting started it's a lot of output of money right at the start and uh, 
then you've got a long period of time before you start to see income. But let's go check those sheep on pasture. So in our last video, I talked a bit about how we water our sheep and uh, when we're in the valley, kind of over in another area, we, uh, we have a kind of a permanent water line that's always sitting along the creek there that we can tap into, but we don't have that on this uh, five acre field here. And uh, so we end up using this contraption. It's just kind of a little water cart that we hook up to the tractor, we fill it up, and uh, it just gravity feeds into this thing here. I think they're all hiding in the shade. For those of you who aren't super familiar with sheep, sheep generally don't love the heat, so they try to avoid the sun, and uh, at least mine do. They always like these uh, shrubs over here. Here they are. So they're right down in this, under this shrub here. Hiding out. It's always funny how the birds, I don't know if you can see it on that U right there. There's a bird sitting on their back. It's always kind of a funny scenario because I don't know why they want to go on there, but we see it quite often. So they're all hanging out here. Once the, the heat of the day is gone, they'll go out and they'll start grazing. So as you can see, we've got lots of this fencing set up here. Um, essential along this bean field, we wouldn't want these sheep getting in the beans. For one, they aren't my beans. And even if they were, I wouldn't want them in there, so. Hey guys, so here we are this morning. We're about to trim some hooves on our rams. We're just getting them ready for uh, the ne next breeding and we want to make sure they're in good shape. So we're just quickly flipping these guys and taking a look at their hooves and uh, if they need trimming, we're doing it. So we got Bruno here and we're going to flip him and uh, take a look at his feet. There, ready, Jeff? These guys aren't super used to being handled like this because we might do this once a year unless they have an actual problem. So as you can see, if you look closely here, the hoof actually starts to grow over and past on this side. So we got to cut it here to get rid of that excess. And as we go, you'll be able to see a little clear. Whoop, sorry, Jeff. <laughs> Get her so you just want to trim it almost like trimming your own nails just leaving a little bit past the uh, quick there the uh, flushy part there this guy's actually not bad compared to Albert yep. So a lot of the, when they, when they get pretty bad, they actually will grow like that long and then you got to cut the tip way back. So this guy here actually does not have bad hooves. I mean, obviously there's still some stuff to trim back, but they're not super long that they're causing him any trouble. So there we go. 
check his bottom ones here. You just take that little tip off and it usually allows you a spot to get your clippers in there and just clip that back like so. Sometimes it's hard to know if you're actually at the the bottom or if there's just dry junk in there. So you want to move down carefully that you don't actually get into the the part that's living that has actual blood in it. Just let these go. So you can see that this one here has actually grown a fair bit longer than this one. It must just be the way he walks and and wears his feet. So let's get oop, take the tip off there. Why not? Settle down. Honestly. And then there's Curtis hey. playing in the you know what. Alright. Just Bill yet. He's actually our most skittish ram. So we'll see how this goes. They're all wary of us now. Yes, Dad. You could use them. Okay, nah. maybe we'll just try him standing. Yep. So there's a good view, nice clean view of what it looks like in the fleshy part. And then you just want to trim this. This one, like I said, is not bad at all, which is really what you want to see in a ram, because that usually means that his offspring also won't have tons of trouble with their hooves. So there we go. One more front one. See like this one here, barely needs any attention really. And you can see this one is slightly folded over. So like we said, we try to check them usually before they do a good breeding. The way we know that if they do have a foot problem, we know it's not their hooves, um, it's something else. Uh, but realistically, we don't usually have much trouble. But uh, you do want to make sure that your rams, when you select for rams, that they are also ones that are wearing their hooves properly. So that means that they've got the proper confirmation in terms of how they stand and walk. And also uh, in terms of some some animals tend to grow their hooves quicker than others so if you can find a ram that doesn't have that and he can pass that on to his offspring then uh, that's a good situation so that's partly what uh, you might look for when you're looking at rams so so here I am in my soybean field doing a quick walk through as you can still see there's ample amount of weeds down there but for the most part the crop has mostly taken over the field most of the beans have really bushed up and done quite well so this is a spot that i did the other day so as you can see these weeds have been pretty much destroyed here there's still a few in the row which are kind of hard to get at this point but uh overall they're doing pretty good like these ones are i don't know i would say two two and a half feet tall and uh that's how most of the field is, especially in, on the one half where I had corn last year. And then, interestingly, when we go over to this field 
where I had the fall rye, you look at the size difference from here to there, it's quite dramatic. I'm not exactly sure why, but uh, it is what it is. This side definitely needs some cultivating done yet. That's what we're going to go do now. So I'll go show you what the cultivator looks like and how it works. I know you've seen it a little bit on some of our videos. I'll just explain that a little bit. So this here is my row crop cultivator. Standing from here, you can basically see that in between each row is where the actual crop would be growing. So here there would be a one and so on. And uh, in between each row, we got five tines, two in the front there. These two go right here, go a little bit wider. And this one takes up the center. These right here are your rolling shields that would be down if the crop was small, but seeing as the crop is now large, I've got them pulled up. And you may be wondering what in the world I'm doing with all these blocks on here, but this is just for additional weight because the teeth on the cultivator were not digging into the ground. They were just sliding along the top because uh, we've got hard clay here and it doesn't always penetrate well, especially when we put some of these wider uh, sweeps on, these wider teeth. The reason I put wider teeth on is to cover more area. And with this one being this wide and this one being this wide, it gets that much closer to the plant in between here. So anyways, we're going to go head out to the field and then I'll show you what it looks like from the tractor seat in the middle of the field. Going about five mile an hour here, four and a half to five. We've had probably almost uh, three inches of rain in the last couple weeks, and it's continued to be nice and warm. So stuff is growing like crazy, um, but it has made it difficult for me to get in here. I don't normally like to be in here at this stage anymore. As you can see, the beans are, uh, it's hard to show you here, but probably almost halfway up my tires and uh, we don't want to do too much damage. As you can see, the row crop cultivator is like right on top of those rows and uh, could be tearing up a few of the leaves as we go through here. But uh, I just really wanted to go through one more time and clean up whatever we could of the weeds. And uh, it's a really windy day. It's actually too wet to be out here. I'm kind of mucking through all the low spots, but all they're doing is calling for rain for the next uh, week every other day there's a chance of thunderstorm or something so i thought i'd just get in here and do the worst part of the field um, and then see again for that second half where it wasn't as weedy as this first half but there's going to be certain sections where for sure the weeds kind of took over and it's going to definitely affect yield but i think probably 70 percent of the field will for sure be fairly decent so uh that's it you know we don't get hail or anything like that which they're kind of talking about possibly for tonight so we'll see what happens but that's kind of an update on what's going on around here between the fields here and uh, what's been happening in the sheep barn so thanks for watching and stay tuned we'll try to keep uh, things going